now we are ready to get into some more details about the BGP here so if you remember in our previous video we have learned some of the basics of BGP where we started with autonomous system number IBGP and BGP differences and then BGP features loop prevention mechanism and when to use BGP and when not to use BGP so this is something what we have seen in our first video now we are going to continue from there now in this video we are going to learn the different types of ISP connections so depending upon the size of the company depending upon the company's requirement we can have different types of connections to ISP and we have something called single home dual home multi homing dual multi homing connections we'll try to see the differences between these connections and in which type of connection which type of routing or which type of BGP configuration is more appropriate we'll try to look into that and then finally we'll see if you are connecting to ISP let's say uh, I'm connecting to ISP via BGP route what are the different methods we try to connect okay that's what again we'll see more in detail about that like we can have three different options with default routes and some specific routes and exchanging all the routes so we'll see these two majorly in this video training so first we'll start with the type of ISP connections so the first one is single home connection now if you remember in the previous video I already discussed single home so in a single home environment we have just one exit path so this is my autonomous system number let's say is autonomous system number 80 it's connecting to my service forwarder which is my ISP one and I just got only one connection so in this type of connection we can just have a single default route I can go to this router I can simply say IP route 0000 0000 and whatever the next stop let's say the next stop is 1.1.1.2 and then from the ISP side he's going to configure a static route for the public IP whatever we are using here so it's just a normal simple default configurations what we did in our basic CCNA so in this section in this uh, single home environment it's really not recommended to run BGP we just have a site with a single ISP connection and this is fine that doesn't that doesn't do not uh, that doesn't depend heavily on the internet or the WAN connection so here we can use the static routes which is most commonly used or even you can use some of the that's what we just seem to receive a default route to the ISP now second connection we have something called dual homing environment now this is something more common in uh, most of the companies who are not running BGP we generally have two links be connecting to service forwarders now what is the advantage we get connecting to two links the main advantage we get here is if any one of the link fails like what we'll do is we'll go to this router and I'm going to say IP route 0000 here also 0000 I'll say next stop address is 1.1.1.2 which is my first link and I'm going to configure one more default route on the same router I'm going to say IP route 0000 0000 and then I'm going to say 2.2.2.2 with some different administrative distance now by default it will use the first link because of administrative distance default is 1 if that primary link fails it is going to use the second link now the main advantage we get in this uh, dual home site connection is we get redundancy the major advantage now we can do like this here as well where you might be connecting to two different routers or you may have a connection to two different routers also for redundancy and we generally run some HSRP, uh, VRRP, GLBP to have multiple gateways again in the LAN. So that's something uh, different types of configurations. And then that's how we do in case of dual homing. And in this scenario also, it's not really recommended to use BGP. So we're not going to run any BGP because we are just connecting to the same service provider. So if any one of the link fails, only the backup link is used. And very less we can do path manipulation here. So you can see here very less we can do path manipulation so in this scenario also it's not uh, recommended to use BGP now but when it comes to multi homing environment like in this scenario we can use BGP here now when you have a multi homing environment where you got two exit paths from the same AS this is my AS it's connecting to ISP1 and connecting to ISP2 and I can tell some part of the traffic let's say I got four networks like I took example 10 node network 20 dot network 30 dot network 40 dot network and I can tell that 10 dot network 20 dot network should use a primary ISP and the remaining two which is my 30 dot network 
can use the alternate secondary ISP. And in case if this link fails, then everyone goes through secondary link. So this is what we can do some path manipulations where we can decide how the traffic should enter the AS or exit the AS. So we call this as path manipulations. So in this type of scenarios, BGP is more typically used and we generally exchange the routes. In this scenario, we're not simply getting the default route or we are not sending only the default route here. Instead, we are also exchanging all the routes from the service border through BGP protocol. But in case of previous two different networks, we are just sending the default route. Since any unknown packet will be sent to ISP and ISP will return back that packet based on the static route. But here, we are trying to exchange all the routes through BGP or maybe some specific routes. And then we have something called dual home environment. In this dual home environment, it's just an addition of extra links between the same. It's just the same thing. We just got some extra links which will provide a more redundancy, the most redundancy. And again, here also we can do some use some BGP to do some path manipulations. So these are the four different types of uh, implementations we can use. And especially in the first two networks, the first two types, BGP is not really recommended because in the first two scenarios, what we do is we simply configure a default route, like default routing, if you remember the basic default routing in the basic CCN studies. And from the ISP side, we get a static default static route for the public IP because our router also do some NAT translations. That's how it works. But whereas in case of the remaining two setups, we are not only connecting to ISP1, for redundancy, we are going to connect to ISP2 also. So that if uh, I can also use, I can tell that some of the network should go from here and the remaining network should go from here. Now, if you want to do that path manipulation within your AS, we need to run BGP. Anyway, service forward is going to run BGP. Now you need to have a registered AS number. And based on that AS number, I can, I can exchange the routes between from the service forwarder and I can do some path manipulation where I will decide how my routes or how my network should go to the internet via this route or that route. So this is something what we get if you are using BGP, especially in the big size networks, they use BGP for these things. Or if you are working for a service forwarder, you may have some customers with this type of connections. You may need to do some path manipulation that, okay, for the customer one, they should exit from one path and for the customer two, it should use the alternate path. So that's something really very useful the BGP is designed for that only. So next thing we need to understand is, the next thing is we need to understand how we are going to connect to the service for and what how we are going to exchange the routes. Now there are three different methods of exchanging the routes or communicating with the service forwarder or routes or communicating to internet. So one option we can just have a single default route and the next option is we can have some more specific routes and the default route. And the third option is we can have the complete routing table. Now, how it is going to work? So I got some diagrams here. So these diagrams looks a little bit much complicated. So I'll, I'll try to make it simple here by using my own diagrams here, you can see. So what I'm going to do is, this is my autonomous system number and I got plenty of routers, probably more than 50, 60 routers connecting in my AS and my AS number is 65,000, 65,000, some number. And I'm going to connect to two different ISPs already. I have taken some two links from ISP1 and ISP2. Okay, so one option is, what I can do is, if I want to communicate with my internet or if I want to communicate with any outside AS, now one option I can simply do is I can simply use a single default route. That is something what I can do. I can simply go to my router and I can say I can configure a default route here pointing towards ISP1 and then from the ISP he will configure a static route and then that default route I will redistribute into my IGP. Now based on the IGP uh, same thing I will do here as well. I will point a default route here. And from ISP, we have, a def we have a static route. And that static route, I will redistribute into BGP. And now I'm getting the default route from both the sides. I'm getting the default route from both the sides. So based on the IGP metric, like OSP of EHRP, it is going to use any one default route as my primary route. If that route goes down, then automatically it is going to use the second route. 
that is the first option now there is an advantage with this option and there is also one of the disadvantage here now the advantage with this first type of implementation is we don't really need to know the routes let's say I'm going to try to access Yahoo server or Gmail server on the internet I really no need to maintain any information about that Yahoo or Gmail so what I'm going to maintain is I'm going to maintain just a default route so any unknown packet will be sent to ISP and ISP will take care to forward it Yahoo and your communication will start happening between them that's a very good advantage with that we don't have enough means if you, if you don't have enough resources you can really try this but the drawback is we cannot do any path manipulations so path manipulation is not possible in this scenario because uh, even though you are going to use two default routes it's going to use any one of the route as primary route based on IGP metric and if that primary route fails then only it is going to use the alternate route that is something uh, not possible right that is the main disadvantage here so now it depends upon like it's a very good option especially if you don't have enough resources in your network you don't have uh, high speed routers to maintain the routes to run BGP you can simply go on with this option this is really useful especially applicable for small size to medium size companies they go with this kind of solution that is the first option we can use a simple default route now the second option is we can have a default route that is one thing and also we can have some specific routes. this is another way of uh, implementing this is one or more implementation which we can do if you're running BGP now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a default route from this side and both the sides I'm going to have a default route that is just like a case at the same time I'm also receiving some specific routes specific routes means let's say I, I regularly access some of my servers on the internet there are some 10 servers or my company's servers or anything I got some regular servers maybe Yahoo Gmail or it can be any any other servers now what I'll do is I'll try to only receive this network information into my BGP table which means in my BGP table I have the information of those 10 servers or networks but I'm not going to maintain the complete internet routes for all the so to reach those 10 routes or 10 networks I'm going to receive the information and I can run BGP and I can say that 10 dot network and 20 dot network should use the primary ISP or I can say they will use ISP one route in my LAN so in my LAN, in my in my AS I got four different networks and I can do some path manipulation that these four networks when they go to the, when they reach these specific servers or specific networks they should use ISP1 and the remaining two networks they should use ISP2 so I'm going to do some path manipulation based on those specific routes and if I'm trying to access any other networks other than this like maybe I'm trying to access some normal internet traffic or I'm trying to do something other than other than accessing these specific servers they just go with a default route so in this scenario I'm getting a default route which means it is reducing the overhead on my router is I'm not going to install all the routes at the same time I have some specific routes so that I can do path manipulation only for specific selected destinations or specific selected networks at the same time for the remaining networks I'm going to use the default route what I have that's the second option now the third option is exchanging all the internet routes now in the third option what we are going to do is we are not going to use any default route we are going to exchange everything from the service product which means on my AS any router in my AS it's connecting to both the ISPs this is my ISP1 and connect to ISP2 I'm receiving all the routes from the service forwarder, all the internet routes from this service forwarder. now I'll do path manipulation for each and every network any network I go I want to access on the internet or any any other AS I'll do my own path manipulation so based on that path manipulation it's going to do the major drawback with the third option is it's really going to be very hard on your routers like your routers really need very huge processing is required to maintain all the routes information to run the BGP and 
you need to have some high-end devices. So especially this is more appropriate for uh, very big size companies or if you are continuously communicating, especially ISPs I can say, the service providers need to maintain each and every route information coming, those things. So if you are running a specific organization, big size organization, we can go with the second option. In case of small size companies, we generally don't do use BGP. We simply go with a default route with a primary and secondary options. So these are some of the three different types of implementations which we use. The default routes from the service provider, which is very easy on the routers. Internal traffic is routed with the nearest BGP router. So it's just forwarded based on your IGP information. Or we can just allow for selection, selection of some paths with others falling back to the default route. And the third one is we are going to exchange all the routes, which is very hard on the resources of the router. But again, it's going to carry the most direct path or the shortest path it's going to carry, assure that. Now, depending upon the requirement, you can go with any one of these options. So we discuss two things here. We try to understand the different ways of connecting to ISPs, like using a single home, dual home connections, which are more appropriate. Uh, using a default route without BGP and if you are running a multi-homing or dual multi-home environment then it's really recommended to go with BGP and we do some path manipulations. At the same time when you're connecting to BGP, uh, when you're running, uh, when you're exchanging the routes through on the internet through ISP, through service provider, then we can have a single default route coming from the service provider and we are not going to uh, run the BGP here, we are just getting the default route from the service provider or we can have some specific routes from the service provider and some specific routes and then the remaining will automatically switch back to the default route and we can have all the routes exchange from the service provider so three different types of implementations so probably we'll try to jump into our labs we do some basic configurations in our next videos so these are some of the basic things we need to understand before we start getting into bgp configurations